The loft is a complex tool with a lot of options, so I won't be able to cover them all in this course. But I'd like to show you the basics of creating lofts, and we can cover all of the advanced options in future lessons. Like the sweep, the loft requires at least two separate sketches to create. The main difference between the loft and the sweep is that the loft allows the use of different shaped cross sections, like the transition between the rectangle and the circle you see here. Before we can loft the feature, we have to create two sketches. Since I'm in a new part file here, I'll start by sketching a rectangle in the default sketch. I won't worry about dimensions for this example. So I'll click Finish Sketch. Next, I'll create a plane that is offset from the original sketch plane. We'll go over creating planes in detail later on in this course, so don't worry too much about this for now. On this new plane, I'll start a sketch, sketch a circle, and click Finish Sketch. Now that I have two visible sketches in the browser, I'll start the Loft tool. The window that appears looks slightly different than others you may have seen up to this point, but it's actually pretty straightforward. At least for the basic loft, like we're creating here. For the basic loft, just focus on this box labeled Sections. All I have to do is click on the profiles, and you'll immediately see a preview of the resulting loft. If I click OK at this point to finish the loft, this is what I get. I'll go ahead and hide the reference plane I created here. Using the loft like this can be convenient when you encounter a design that calls for a specific profile on one side and a different profile on the other, without really caring about what happens in between. There are many other options when creating a loft, most of which are beyond the scope of this course, but there are a couple I'll show you here. To get back into the loft's properties, I'll right-click on it and select Edit Feature. Inventor actually lets you use additional sketches in the loft, either for additional cross-sections or something called rails, which help you further control the shape. Those will be covered in a more advanced course. For now, I'll switch over to the Conditions tab. On this tab, you can control how the profiles transition from one to another. The default setting is something called Free Condition, which just transitions one evenly to the other. For a basic loft like this, you can also change this to Direction Condition, which lets you specify an angle and weight. I'll leave the angle set at 90 degrees and change the weight to 10. If I change this from 10 to 20, you can see the effect. I'll change it back to 10 for this example. I can also change the setting for the other sketch to use a direction condition. I'll again leave the angle set at 90 degrees and change the weight to 10. If I switch this to 20, you can see what effect this setting has on the transition between the two profiles. I'll click OK and the loft is complete. One last thing I'd like to mention here is that the loft feature is still controlled by the sketches for each profile. What I mean is, if you wanted to get rid of these sharp lines that come from the rectangular profile, you can expand the loft feature in the browser and edit the rectangular sketch. I'll go ahead and add a few sketch fillets. And when I click Finish Sketch, you can see the smooth transition between the profiles.